How's everybody? Yeah. Dane, you awake? Yes, sir. Feeling good? Yes, sir. All right, good, good. Y'all had a have had a big Christmas so far. Um, everybody has. Um, what I want to do tonight, and we are going to do a little business, okay? Because this is how we're ending the year. What is this supposed to mean? <laughs> And that took a long time to chew. This is a tiny, y'all can't see it in the back, it's a little tiny clothespin. Unbelievable. I paid, I paid somebody's salary to do that. that where am I Mark? Somebody, somebody got paid a salary with benefits to do that. Got it, okay. Um, I wanna talk a little business tonight, okay? as we end what has been our best year in probably the last five. So give yourselves a hand on that. <laughs> very, very exciting as far as same store sales, uh, growing, the company's growing. I mean, we're not only growing outside of uh, North Carolina, and you know, Guy Guthrie's got an amazing announcement for next month, and uh, just a lot of great stuff going on. But what excites me just as much is that our same store sales you know from about may on just went boom and what that means to you that don't understand what i'm talking about one of the biggest judges and the biggest gauges you can get on your business is am i better than i was last year is my store growing you know because we have a price increase in there now are we growing are we getting better you know are we increasing over what we did last year so it's november versus november october 2013 versus 14. And uh, yeah, the restaurant industry is flatlined. Some of y'all may have seen on the news or read somewhere McDonald's is doing this. They're going down. Their same store sales are way down, and they're having a little mini, mini panic. And we're going up. We're going up. And uh, it's very exciting. But having said that, um, what I want to remind everybody tonight is starting literally tomorrow. Okay, might as well wait to get a jump on next year. You know, every year when December 31st hits, our company closes their books for 2014 and we move into a new year. It's almost like a rebirth. It's almost like starting over again. And it's exciting to me. I get excited every January 1. And uh, I want you to feel the same way. I want you to think about it the same way. And I want you to focus on your score. They paid somebody to take that up there, too. And I want you to do it in this order. And a lot of this is going to be stuff that you've seen before with a little bit of a twist. All right, this is in order of what I want you to focus on. And this is not only you, but this is owners. This is master franchisees. This is district managers. This is everybody in our company. Focus on this. The first thing I want you to think about when you walk into a store, I want you to think about what does this store feel like? Does it feel like a Highway 55 is supposed to feel? Some of you out there going, man, he's really speaking Greek now. What is he talking about? Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Do the people that work in there smile easily? Do the people that work in there act like they enjoy what they're doing? Or do they walk around like they're, this is the most stressful, worst thing in the world? And, and what that means is an operator, if your folks walk around that way, you got a couple of weeks to make a change before, that, before January 1st because they're feeding off of you. It's coming right off of you. If you walk in the door every day with a smile on your face, if you walk in the door every day excited about it, okay? If you walk, they will feed off of that and they will be the same way, assuming you've hired the right people. But are they smiling? Do they act like they want to be there? Do they exhibit LMN? And y'all are going to hear that term a lot. You're going to find it on the new uniforms on the sleeve. And what the LMN stands for is love my neighbor. Every time you put your uniform on, it's going to be on your sleeve and remind you to love your neighbor. Okay? Remind you to love the people that work around you. Remind you to love your neighbor because that's what we do, y'all. We do it through the food that we feed them. We do it through the way we smile at them. We extend ourselves for them regardless of how it feels, right? Y'all remember at the rally when I stood up and said that was the difference between me struggling and me starting to have some success is when I changed my tune and realized it wasn't about me anymore. <clears throat> do our people exhibit that? in the stores, all the way down from the cook level, the weight level, all the way up to, to do I exhibit that? And everybody in between, okay? 
Do your people love their neighbors? Do they understand that? See, I may go into your restaurant and I may ask them, what do I mean by love my neighbor? And they should be able to tell me that because you should tell them what they mean. That means we're going to extend ourselves regardless of how it feels. That means the customer is not always right. Sometimes they're wrong, but it doesn't matter. We're still going to extend ourselves. We're going to make them smile before they leave. And if everybody in society, in every walk of life, and everybody had that attitude, it'd be a pretty wonderful plan. Well, we're going to do it in our world. Do they exhibit that? And I can tell that feel within five minutes of walking into a restaurant. I can tell whether that exists in that store or not. Okay? Basics. Do they greet and open doors? And what I mean by greet, I've been in a couple stores where they yell, like, hey, how you doing? I want a sincere greeting, man. Run and get the door for because you want to love your neighbor, you want to open the door for them. Run outside. Run outside on a day like today. You see somebody walking up to your strip center and it's rainy and maybe they got a kid in the carrier or whatnot, and you're not busy, man. Run out there with an umbrella and walk them in. I don't care if they go to the dollar store next door, it's still the right thing to do. You still extend yourself for your neighbor. That's what we did. So we're gonna work on our field. Because that's the real differentiator. Everything else I'm gonna go over is nuts and bolts. But that's, that's what makes us different than Five Guys. That's what makes us different than Smash Burger or whatever the newest little new kid on the block is that everybody gets so damn excited about. Because at the end of the day, they're going to come back to you. I can remember when Leland 2 opened, I had to go visit the store. And the entire staff, and I'm going to pat Bridget on the back here, but the entire staff, there was a new Mexican restaurant that had opened across the way. And the entire staff was giving almost everybody that came back in to eat shit because they knew they'd gone over to that Mexican restaurant. And everybody was like sheepishly going, yeah, you're right, I'm sorry. Well, we're back here now, we're, we're not going there anymore. But that, that was a community in there that they had with their guests, and that was so cool. Is there any wonder that Leland has stayed in the top 10 you know, since its inception? Because that exists in that store. That's the feel I'm talking about. Do you have that? And you know, here's how you get it. You talk it all the time. You come to these meetings every single month, and you hear a variation of the same thing that a lot of people on this front row, he has heard for 20-something years. I change it up. I tweak it every now and I try to keep it fresh. But at the end of the day, I talk it all the time. I talked it earlier today with my district managers, reminding them of what we're all about and what we do. Reminding them that's the first thing you look for when you walk in a store. You don't walk in the store and look for something bad. You walk in there and you get a feel for that store immediately. Try to find one or two good things, and then go ahead and start making some changes. What I want y'all to understand, and what I want the masters to understand, if they tuned in tonight, uh, the other masters as well, what I want you to understand is that we're going to be hard on this. But if I love you, i got to be hard on you too. If I, don't, if I feel like it's missing, if my people feel like it's missing, we're going to have a conversation with you about that. And you may say, well, that was a dick thing to do. Kenny came in here, I hadn't seen him in forever, finally comes in my store, and look how he is. No, I'm doing that because I want you to get better. I'm another set of eyeballs. And if I don't get a feel in there, man, we got to start from right there. I'm worried, still worried about your ticket times. I'm still worried about the other things I'm getting ready to go over. But I'll really worry if you ain't got a feel in there. I'm really going to worry about that. Because that's what makes us different. That's what makes us number what, Andy? What number are we on? Three. Three. We are, all right, Entrepreneur <laughs> Magazine puts out top 500 franchises in the world every year. We made the list. We are number 480. <laughs> What'll take us to number one is fear. That's what'll take us to number one. The second thing I want you to really focus on, now I hope everybody took some notes on that because I tried to describe what I meant by that pretty well. And this is a good old business world called productivity. But what it means is, bottom line, are we getting tickets out in four to six minutes and the food tastes great? If you got cooks with feel, if you got cooks that love their neighbor, that's happening. Or they're trying, okay? They're trying. And maybe seven or eight in a rush or whatnot, but they're trying, okay? But are we doing that? That's a basic. Some of you out there right now are going, well, what is, I mean, Kenny, of course we're doing it. No, it's not happening in some of our stores right now. There's a relaxed attitude. There's a something, man, that's happening out there. But y'all, that's what we do. We work. 
I was talking to a, another dad tonight, and, and I was talking about, and I said, you know what your role is, man? Your role is to work. And this goes for you moms out there. Your role is to be the example to your children, because that's what life's all about. You know what? You're going to work. With us, though, you can get rewarded, which is kind of cool. All right? But you're going to work. That's what we do. And that's what we've got to impart in our people. And once again, I, you, some of you are going to see me. I'm going to walk in your store one day, and I'm going to say, give me a hat and clock somebody out. I'm cooking with you today. I'm probably not going to do the open to close because I do have other things I need to do, but I'm going to cook lunch. And y'all watch. I work. That's where I started. Cooking burgers, man, from 10 in the morning till 10 at night. Well, 11 to 9, but I was there from 10 to 10, okay? That's where I started. That's where I come from. And Andy Turner will tell you, I'm going to talk shit to you while I'm doing it if you're slow. Okay? I can remember Neil Dennis one year lining up bun guys on me. And I just ran them all off. Next. But man, I took pride in that. Get the food. Man, my food's piling up over here. It's burning on you. Will you go? Next bun guy. Tag up. Next guy. I'm going to run this one too. Now, I don't know that I'm that good anymore. I do know we have two grills now, so I damn well can be dangerous on one. I know that. But I promise you, when I go in there to work with you, I'm going to tell you to clock somebody out, and I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to set a pace. And I'm going to set a pace with my energy. It comes out of my pores, man. If I'm standing beside you, you will get fidgety, because I'm fidgety. And I'm going to pace if we're slow, and I'm going to walk back and forth. I used to do that. If I didn't have tickets coming out of my ears at all times, I was like a caged animal, man. I really was. I was like, let's go, let's go. Go out in the mall, say hi to somebody, drag them in there, do what you got to do. Because if I'm here, I'm going to get it done, man. I'm not going to waste my time. That's got to be your attitude. That's, what, that's where productivity comes from, that kind of intensity. Okay? And everybody around you feels it. The wait staff feel it. Order up. Because when I turn around and go, order up, please, they flew to get the food. Here's hell. They did not want Kenny to say it twice. Because the second one might be, order up, ladies, or I'll run it out right after I get these six tickets out, please. Yes, I managed my smart ass. Yes, I did. We got it, sir. Excellent. Okay? Get it out, man. Get intense. That's where, that's where four to six minutes comes from. <coughs> You're not going to get to four to six minutes by saying, okay, well, right now we're at 10. But then this week, let's see if we can get it to nine. <laughs> Heck with that. See how I clean that up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm already working on a resolution right now. Heck with that. Let's go to four right now. Right now. Why not? Are we not capable? There are other people in this company doing four-minute ticket times. Are we not good enough? Tell that to your guys. See what they say. What's happening all over the place? And we're at six. And track that. As an operator, as a leader in your store, you need to sit down with your ticket times every day after lunch and do a little add them up <laughs> and divide them by the number of tickets. And that's your average. Do it. Do it every shift. Talk about it. You'll get better. You'll get faster. Okay? Cleanliness. That's a no-brainer, isn't it? I was in one of our brand new stores recently <laughs> that has absolutely been rocking. I was in Kano. And they did 27,000 again last week. So they actually dropped the 20 and have gone back up to 27, which is awesome. Let me tell you what, though, gang. It was freaking spotless. And I swear to God, I thought it opened the day before. And they got volume. Some of y'all don't have that much volume and you're dirtier. There's no excuse for that. Because that tells me that during the slow times, when you're not getting it out, you're not working with the same intensity to clean the restaurant as you do when you have tickets up. That's what that tells me. So what are you saying, man? We got to work hard all day? That's exactly what I'm saying. Because I do, still today, I do. If you're standing around, you got time to scrub something clean, don't you, man? You got time. Don't let me roll in there at 3 o'clock and see y'all have a powwow and something beat and see a dirty table. That pisses me off. Clean the table, then powwow. Sweep the floor, then powwow. Clean the bathroom, then powwow. All that's done, I'm just doing your powwow. 
If some of that ain't done, I'm probably going to stand back and you're going to get the candy fire eyes is what you're going to get. Like, I can't believe y'all standing around chatting with that nasty-ass table sitting over there when the next customer that walks in goes, look at these lazy asses. They couldn't clean that one table? And don't think customers don't think that because y'all think it when you go in other restaurants, don't you? Sure you do. Sure you do. You go into those restaurants that have a little counter that you walk up to, you know the ones I'm talking about, if you ever have to frequent one of those, and then you look around and nobody's taking your order, they're not busy, and the place is dirty, and they're having a chat, it pisses you off. Well, let me tell you folks, that ain't us, that ain't who we are. We love our neighbors, we want them to come in our, our house, and our house is clean, because we love our neighbors. If y'all ever invite guests over to your house, do you ever clean up beforehand? I know you dudes in here that have a significant other. Your significant other has made damn sure you've cleaned up before they come over. Hey, you. you vacuum while I do the dishes. <laughs> it's just me and the You don't got to clean it up. I've known them 20 years and know my floor is not clean every damn day. <laughs> All right, I'll vacuum you do the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> clean your house, man, when folks come over to visit you. Those people that choose to eat with us every day, that place ought to be spotless. It ought to be clean. That's number three. There's only five things I want you to focus on. And I want you to focus on these five things for the next 90 days until March 31st, okay? Ah, now he's getting to the business. Food and labor. Some of y'all still don't do the inventory program, and that's okay as long as you know what's happening in your business. As long as your food costs are spot on, you don't need to do it. If your food cost is out of whack, you might want to think about it. Or you need to work open clothes every day to make sure that people aren't giving stuff away. Make the call. But that's the only way you're going to control it. The only way you're going to control it is to have par levels and to build those, to order those par levels and don't have excess in there. Let me explain again once more what food cost means. Every time, in most of our cases here, we are paying for our food on a weekly basis or once every two weeks. That's how we pay. So if I have a ton of crap sitting on my shelves right now and I pay that bill on Friday and I haven't sold that crap, that is inventory that is sitting collecting dust and I have not made any money. Does that make sense? I want our back rooms and our freezers and our coolers to turn to empty and refill, empty and refill. That keeps me in the most positive cash position I will ever be in. That's how you run a restaurant. So if you're not doing the inventory program, you ought to know that. I didn't have that back in 91. I didn't have the inventory program. But I will tell you the honest to God truth is God is my witness standing in front of you right now. There were times my food truck pulled up and I pulled out my last bag of french fries when he pulled up. But I made some money on some french fries. You understand? The last bag. I didn't have tons of excess. Put the clips up. Don't order 12, a case of 12 ounce cups if you've got six sleeves left. Because guess what? You're good. Aren't you? The highest volume store in here is still good. Okay? Learn your business. Get a feel for your food costs. Let's talk about labor now. Best thing I can teach you about labor is if you're not busy, if you're not serving customers, don't have a shitload of people there. Period. Don't open up the store with three people. Are you, are you injured? <laughs> is there an issue? Are you physically unable? If so, get a second person to help you. But otherwise, you are not making any money when you open. You understand? Well, but that's not true, Katie. Sometimes somebody comes by and I give them a key. Okay, you just made a dollar fifty, and you paid somebody twelve dollars to help you open. Not smart. Not smart. In the afternoons, get down to what it requires for you to still wow the guest and keep the place clean and have feel. Get down to that number. Because guess what? Except for in the mall at Christmas time when you are busy all day long, in most cases, folks don't eat big meals at 3.30. It just doesn't happen, or 4 o'clock. So that's when you start to clock people out. You weed people in. Don't bring your entire staff in at 11 o'clock. 
even if you're doing $25,000 a week, don't bring your entire staff in at 11 o'clock, unless you're busy at 11, really busy. And remember this rule of thumb. Everybody make eye contact and listen. If you yourself are not under some pressure, you've got too many people working. Think about it. If you yourself, because you're in there working, and you are the studs and studettes, y'all should be able to do the work too. So if you're not under some kind of pressure, you got too many folks on the clock. Period. Period. Okay? So think about that. Get some pre-clean done. Close with three instead of four or five. You say, man, it's only an hour. It's only seven dollars. Do the math sometime. An hour here, an hour there, an hour here, an hour there. Now we're up to five, ten hours a day, times seven twenty-five, one seventy-two dollars a day, times three hundred and sixty days a year. It's a big number. We are in a nickel and dime business. We are not selling $25 steaks. We are selling, the, that is the most expensive special we ran last year at $8.49. Okay, we're in a nickel and dime business. But if you watch them, they'll grow up to be dollars. If you don't, they will grow up to be dollars in the other direction and you will have a problem. Okay, so stay on your food, stay on your labor, stay under some pressure. Be the example. Work. Look, it was easy for people to follow me because I'm so charismatic. No, because I set a pace every day. You ain't even got to stay with me, Bridget. You just stay in my wake and you'll do just fine. That's how I operate. That's how I operate. And it's still how I operate today. It's amazing. You'll see executives in this company now. If Kenny comes in and slams a spatula down, by the way, that was an old trick of mine. If you were ever cooking with me, you two guys, and let's say y'all are both been out the night before having a good time, right? Because you're young, you know. And I'm over here busting my tail, <coughs> just not quite getting the fries back there. And on the buns, I'm piling you up just a little bit, you know. I'd hit the spatula on the, on the grill. Ting! And you both would look at me like a... And it was amazing. They got so fast. I'm working here. Y'all going to join me? Of course you are. I thought you were. No threat. Joy, we were your fire. Just a little spatula thing. Well, I come in here and I tame my spatula sometimes too. Not literally, but figuratively. And it's funny, you watch all these 50 year olds start to hop. <laughs> they get cracking. Everything gets cracking a little bit, you know? That's how you have that's how you do it. There's probably people online that don't know me real now. Going, what the hell is he talking about now? The fifth thing I want you to do, it's actually six things total. We got to get back to being a people factory. <clears throat> the only way we're, we are going to become great is we have to be develop people constantly. Because there are multiple roles. There are roles where you may, somebody may be out there in the field right now that can go help us open stores in Denmark. Can go there and stay there for four weeks and love every minute of it and be a great ambassador of what we do. There are also roles where you can still operate a restaurant and become an owner. That still exists today in Highway 55. It's not changed. That's just as real as it's ever been, okay? There are roles about people development. Here's the sideline you get as an operator or an owner of your own store. What you get out of developing people is you get a better staff. You get a more enthused staff. You get a more inspired staff because they have opportunity too. If it's all about you because you're the owner, if it's all about you because you're the operator, and you don't want to take some folks with you who are eager and want to be a part of it, if you don't do that, you are going to struggle mightily. It's a yin and yang of business. Let's say you're my best guy, right? And I know that you are really, really good, okay? You're really good. And if I let you go run a store, even though you're the most qualified guy, God, that means I got to work over the clothes, so I'm just giving up my best guy. Now I have to show all over him what I've done because it's about me. Remember, we love our enemies. It ain't about us. I'm going to push him out of the nest because then you're looking, and all of a sudden you go, Wow, he just became an operator. Now he's working this way towards ownership. Hey, what about me? Okay, you come step in here. And it happens that way. And it multiplies itself. 
Okay? But if I hang on to him and he gets frustrated one day and goes and works at Foot Locker, now I've lost him, the entire company's lost him. And guess what he's thinking? And he's just going through the motions too. That's why you create a people factor. That's why you develop people. And you make them, and you let them do parts of your meeting. Like say you were my key guy, and I have a store meeting or whatnot. I get up and do part of it. I give you a part. I'm letting everybody know that I'm building his skills of talking in front of a group. We're going to put the black shirt criteria back into corporate stores. We're going back to that old school criteria where you have to earn that black shirt. You don't just get it because you bought it. You don't just get it because you paid for it as an owner. You've got to earn it. And we're going to be hardcore on it. But man, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you some neat stories. Who in here ever earned a black shirt? Raise your hand. How did you feel when you got it? Honestly, didn't you, Ryan? Because you weren't, it wasn't given to you, was it? You earned it. That's coming back. That's coming back. We've been giving them out lately. We're getting ready to change that. We're going to have a red one or something. We're going to have a different color one. You get that black on, you earn to wear that black. That puts you in an elite class of friggin' ninjas. Hamburger ninjas. And ninjets. That's the female version. But we got to develop people. We not only got to develop them, we got to let them go. Because it's the best thing for them and it ain't about us. Even, even day, if it means I got to work over the clothes for the next couple weeks, you've just done the right thing by that guy. He busted his tail for you. And your staff is going to appreciate what you just did for him, and they're going to step up a notch for you too. And somebody will step into that spot. That's how it works. You hold on if it's all about you. Don't say nothing to me when you struggle. Don't call me up for an operator when he quits in. Now I'm just contradicting myself, I? I'm going to give you an operator and then call you a dumbass and say develop your own. How about that? Is that fair? All right, number six, and this is the most important thing I want to talk to you about. No, this is in order, but this one actually is number one in order on its own. So we're going to call this one, okay? <laughs> Does everybody understand that? We're going to focus on these things, y'all. We're going to focus. When we come in to visit your restaurant and we do a, an audit or whatever, the audit's going to be on these things right here, and that's it. I mean, that's pretty much it. You know, we can talk about clean baseboards and this and that. Nah, it's just part of climbing this. We can talk about it's, this is it. That's where you're locked in on. I want you to lock in. Does my store have the right feel? Do we get the food out and is it good? It's one thing to do four minute ticket time to serve crap too, okay? Is it good? Are we as clean as we possibly can be? Is my food and labor in line within parameters? And are we developing people? And if you're an exciting place to work, you're going to develop people, okay? You're going to. If you're a fun place to work, you will develop people. People get excited of being around people that are going somewhere. People don't want to be around somebody that ain't going nowhere. Okay? They don't want to be around somebody that's self-centered. They don't care about your problems. Y'all, I got lots of them. Y'all don't care, and I don't share them with you, because it ain't, who cares? They're my problems. When I come up here and I'm in front of you, it's about you. It's about me telling what you need to do to be successful. Now, this right here is important, okay? It's the loyalty gift card program. I'm going to wow you with some numbers here in just a minute because we got some data on this program. Number one, the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to rebrand it. I don't like the name loyalty card. Everybody out there in their mother's got a loyalty card. We're going to have the LMA card. We love my neighbor card. When that guest looks at that sleeve or looks at that card, they're going to say, what LMN is? And that person who, who sells it or gives them that card ought to be able to tell them exactly what that means. That's the love my neighbor card. Y'all see the theme here? This is who we are. This is what we do. It's a community card, man. This is, a, this is because you come in here and eat with us all the time. Here. Thank you. Okay? So we're going to change that. What your role in this is, first and foremost, is to make sure that every person in your restaurant knows how to do that program immediately. And I'm going to give you what, Andy, about two or three weeks to do that in? I think it's three. Before we get it rebranded? Yeah. Yeah, probably three weeks. Okay? <coughs> Everybody. Oh, man, my staff already knows. Let me tell you what happened to me the other day when I went into a restaurant. The man, I, <laughs> think of the odds of this happening. 
I'm only in this store for like this short window of time. And I happen to be standing at the register, all right? And I'm talking with somebody else, and the manager's standing here ringing somebody up, and the man wanted to buy a $40 gift card. How cool is that, right? 40 bucks. Here's how the manager handled it. This machine don't like me. Here, you got, you got, you got to set this man up on this. Hands it to the owner. The owner goes over and does it. Takes about eight seconds. Here's my point. If the owner's not standing there talking to me, that sale walks out the door. Guaranteed. That manager needs to be replaced. That gentleman just ate with us and his whole family and was so excited about his experience that he wanted to buy a $40 gift card for somebody, and that's the attitude he got at that register. Unbelievable. Go out and retrain. Promise me you'll retrain. Everybody in your store needs to know how to do this card and do it well. Everybody. Because I got some goals we're going to shoot for, okay? I want y'all to look at this graph up here. This is actual data from our restaurants. All right, here's what's interesting. Can y'all see, you probably, in the back you can't, but let me count from the right. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, six from the right, you see how the graph, all of those are tall and really, really growing, okay? That was in <coughs> May of this year, okay? In May of this year, you see a spike. It happens. Okay? You see, it's starting to drop off in September and also in November. Um, October is missing out of there, but no, I'm sorry. August, September, yeah, November. You see, it's starting to drop off in October and November. But you see that spike, okay? Now put the other graph up there for me, real quick. Our same sort of says. January, we were down 7.66%. February, we were up not even 1%. March, we were up almost 3%. We got excited. April, we dropped back down to 0.56. Remember where the spikes were on the gift card and the loyalty card? When was the spike again? Man. What happened in May? 8% increase. Coincidence? Now, here's the amazing thing. Right now, I'm going to talk in the dark, okay? I'm trying not to walk into those boxes over there, too. Here's the amazing thing. We only have 62,000 people on our loyalty program right now. So well, that's a lot, man. 62,000, that's a lot. That's 100 something stores. That's not a lot. Mount Olive, Jonathan, how many people do you have on your loyalty program right now? A little over 2,000. In a town of 6,000. So he has a third of the town. Probably the outlying areas too, all right? But he has 2,000 people on the loyalty program right now. What was your increase last month, Jonathan? I'm sorry for these tricky questions, man. 17. 17%. How old's your store? 20 years old. Where were you in the top 10 last month? Last month? Yeah. Number two. There's over 2,000 people in this loyalty program. 2,000 people in this loyalty program. So it's 20 years old, a town of 6,000, and he was number two in the entire company last month. And are you going to get your man, Jeremy? They're paying, they're going to probably do a million dollars in sales this year. Coincidence? I challenge each and every one of you in this room and everybody in this company that by March 31st, we're going to be great at these things right here. But also by March 31st, every store in here is going to have 2,000 people on their hands. Every store. We're going to have over 200,000 people in the loyalty program by the end of March. Not 62,000, 200,000. Okay? And watch what will happen to yourselves. Is that the do-all, end-all? Probably not. We probably got better, too, and, and we probably had the owning program kick in. We had a lot of things. Okay, probably have it. But I'm going to tell you what, that's a pretty obvious correlation, isn't it? That's really obvious. That goes up. And the, all right, go back to the other thing. Go back to the other one for you. All right, you see the green at the top? You know what that means? Those are win backs. 
What that means, those are people that got on the loyalty program and had not been in our stores in a month's time, and the loyalty program brought them back. That's pretty big. Do I have another graph? Give me another one. I don't like that. <laughs> All right, now, stay, stay on that one. Okay, what this means is, and tell them what this means. <laughs> um, so that first number right there is 32%. And those are people who got the card and came back for a month. And that's pretty far from the course we've been told in the past casual business. Um, after that, something kind of amazing happens. It stays relatively level for the next year. And no one really in our sector has this amount of loyal customers who keep coming back in 20 to 25% numbers, even after a year of loyalty programs. It just kind of shows the stickiness of it. Um, we, were, we were told by Pfizer that they had They've never seen a fast casual company stay above 20% of people coming back. What that tells us, guys, is, is that people like us, we just got to get the card in right We get the card in hand, they'll come back. We don't get the card in hand if they don't know they'll come back. We are winning back customers with that loyalty card, and they're coming back the same month they get the card, too, and using it. That's that bounce back, okay? So the more people in Princeton you can sign up, the better off it's going to work for you. If you only have 200 people in your loyalty program right now, don't expect great things. It's not going to be the greatest thing you ever had. If you got 2,000, you can start having some expectations. Do I have another graph? Is that it? Okay. Does everybody understand that? That's real numbers. That's not Kenny up here blowing stuff, man. That's real numbers. That's the power of this thing. But everybody in the school has got to know how to do it. Everybody in the store. And that doesn't even count the text program that we get out of the which is another bump. See, when you sign them up for a loyalty card, you get their phone number. And then on a Tuesday at 10 a.m., boom, they get a text. Come in today and get a double daddy or bring somebody from your office with you. And we get a little jolt on that Tuesday. Do you know what I mean? Maybe it's a rainy day like today, and we just decide, let's fire one out. We're actually going to have a calendar on it. We're going we're gonna to track this thing even better and get more granular and more drilled down on the numbers so we can see exactly what this program is doing. And what's your job in it? 2,000 in your store. That's your job. Jonathan, add another 1,000 to yours. Jeremy, add another 1,000, OK, if you can. Probably ask everybody in Mount Olive at this point, but keep asking, all right? You keep trying. You keep trying. Build this program and then we'll operate it. We'll make sure it works. Your job is to sign as many people up as you possibly can. This is business in 2014. Me, you give me a loyalty card or a gift card. I've got a stack of them upstairs I forget. I go eat in the restaurant and forget I had a card, a gift card. I'm 51. People younger than me use these things like crazy. The ladies in my office shop with their loyalty cards all the time. All my, it is just what folks do now. This is how they operate. We've got to be out in front of them. We've got to be out in front of them. So what's your job in the next three months? How much? Two how much? Two thousand. And if you teach every waitress how to do it, and by the way, Andy has updated the training on it, and there's actually a conversation. So you can teach your way to go learn this conversation about the loyalty card on how to offer it if they're timid and shy in doing it. We have given them a script to go by. Well, wait a minute, you just said something different. Uh, <laughs> Use your own personality in it. Let's get it out there. And it's a good thing for our guests, too. It's a real good thing for our guests. It's a way to love your neighbors, give them something, a bonus for coming in and eating with you all the time. 12 visit, meals on us, right? Okay. Is that, do y'all see that as powerful as I see it? Remember that second graph we showed that I asked Andy to explain? We want that to be at 30%, not 20. The five Stars was impressed that we maintained 20, because like Andy said, that shows that folks really like our brand, okay? We wanted it at 30. That's what we want. 200,000, all right? Make it happen, y'all. It's up to you. I can't go make that happen for you. You gotta do it. You gotta be a leader and you gotta go make that happen, all right? Oh, this is a neat stat that they gave us, too. Of the people that came back, 34% of them had not been in the store the previous month. I got another stat for you. 
Goldsboro 2, Tarboro, and what was the other one? Nanawa. The difference between, help me explain this one, Andy, because I'm probably going to butcher it. All right, let's just do it this way. Tarboro and Wallace as an example. Wallace has not, has not gotten the program really going yet. Tarboro has. In actual dollars, what the, what the loyalty program meant to Tarboro was $105,000 in potential extra sales for people coming back in and using the loyalty card. And it was $10,000 or less. Granted, the volumes are different. But, Ken Rich, would you like that up? 90 grand? Brandon? Y'all, how many people are you out here? 1,877 at Tarboro. It meant an additional $105,000. Did you hear what I just said? It meant $105,000 to you guys this past year. The loyalty program. Now, some of them may have come back anyway. Well, we don't know that. <laughs> they had that extra incentive to come in because today's free Friday or today's, you know what I mean? We gave them that extra incentive to come and make a visit. So you embraced it. It meant $110,000. What are you going to do in sales this year? For the year? Yeah. Uh, we'll be last year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> good enough. Which means it's going to be between seven and eight hundred thousand, probably. Yes, All right. Very good. Maybe one hundred five of that was a loyalty program, man. Good job, right. Renita. Good job. Okay. Um, I got one more gift I want to give away tonight, y'all. Before I do that, though. I hope everybody wrote this down. Not we're going to send it in an email. Okay. All right. But I want hardcore focus on these things, man. Hardcore. And we need to be at 200,000 in that loyalty program come end of March 31st. And watch our same sales, same store sales blow past double digits. We do these five things plus that, we will move up from number 480 on the entrepreneurial list, I promise you that. Okay?